so always be mindful of that when we're talking about uh, this whole thing of uh, uh, establishing people in the present truth it's it's about that you know because um, we can be, get so caught up in let's say a character study uh, we could be talking about david we could be talking about job we could be talking about you know uh, different people and uh, we should also you know when we're talking about these it, it's wonderful like we we talk about these characters we learn so much um, about their lives how, about how and and a lot of things that we can you know uh, put to practice a uh, lot of things that we can avoid mistakes that we can avoid from their lives and so on like, like how they relate to god um, but also we need to understand that in this present time uh, you know we are living on this side of the cross like the cross has happened the, the, some of the characters uh, that we could be referring to in the old testament were before the cross now we are after the cross and there are certain things that were available for us which they did not you know there are certain things that they that we walk in which they did not and especially when it comes to the ministry of the holy spirit and and also our identity you know as believers all that has uh, drastically changed like over the dispensation right so god being the same but the way he ministers um, through the spirit is different right so so we need to be mindful of that and present people that right uh, present that to the audience which will be very empowering very liberating right uh, otherwise it can end up being a very condemning message you know uh, so it should be it, you know when a truth presented it always liberates it convicts of course convicts the sinner convicts the person who is uh, rebelling uh, openly rebelling against god it convicts the person but also uh, with that conviction comes you know with that pronouncement of judgment if you want to call it that you know comes the you know the the way out or the door uh, through which they can step in and it's it's always liberty and freedom and the choice which they can make uh, in order to get back to God, in order to you know uh, be restored and so on. So uh, never forget that, right? Okay. So let's move on. Uh, the other thing. Uh, so we I'm not sure what page we are in, but we are looking at chapter 13, ministering God's word, practical instructions, right? So we're looking at point 11. It says um, uh, point 11 is the reminder that we don't always have to have a, a revelation or a new revelation okay um because sometimes as speakers we want to uh, you know we want to uh, have that we want to present something fresh something new which is a good good thought good intention but if god has revealed something and uh, or he if god is you know leading us to reiterate certain things uh, which we've already already been declared it's fine you know, it's fine to go with it um you know for example if you look at matthew 13 and verse 52 um you know matthew 13 and verse 52 the lord jesus talks about how a scribe um, brings from uh, the storeroom right matthew 13 52 and he said to them therefore every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old so there is the new there is the old right so um so you like a householder bringing things out of the treasure both both new and old so so maybe it's a reiteration of something that is old maybe it's a re-establishing of something that is old no problem just go ahead and proclaim that declare that right um so don't be we don't have to be insecure we don't have to be apologetic about it and right? we can present that confidently right and um uh, another scripture to look at is john 8 and verse 31 okay john 8 verse 31 where the lord jesus says that um, um let me just read that out john 8 31 um if you abide in my word uh am i looking at 31 yeah if you abide in my word you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so so lord jesus um, uh, instruction is this that you stay in the word that you abide with the truth of the word right which means that uh, abiding meaning um, that the word stay in you you stay in the word you make it part of your life uh, not only acknowledge it but also 
you know, be obedient to the truth. You abide in the word. And this is what um, will happen when you do that, that you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, when it comes to knowing the truth, uh, it's uh, it need not be something that is fresh and new. It can be something that is, again, you know, the Lord reminds us of it. And when that truth, truth has this ability of the, the timely truth, timely proclamation of the truth has this ability to, truth has this ability to set us free. You know, so when it's proclaimed in a timely manner, when it's proclaimed as quickened by the Holy Spirit, uh, we, we will know the truth and having known the truth, it will set us free. Right? So um, we can go ahead and proclaim it and declare it confidently, knowing that this is what truth will accomplish in the hearer's uh, life. Okay, uh, one more verse that we can look at is Hebrews chapter 2 and uh, verse 1. Hebrews 2 and uh, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest need to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Okay, we must give the more earnest thing, things to uh, earnest heed, uh, or meaning more attention, being careful um, to the things that we have heard. Okay, so it's referring to what you, we have already heard. Um, so these are not something that is something that are new, uh, but something that we have already heard, some instruction that we have already heard, some command that we already received, um, some rema that we've already received, some revelation that we've already received. So the writer of Hebrews saying, you know, you give the more earnest heed to that. Pay attention to that. Be careful about that. Because if you don't do that, then there is a danger that we could drift, okay? that we could slowly move away. And it could be in small steps, um, small distances. So we don't, we, we barely notice it. Okay. You know, the thing is, if, if in a car, if your, if your tire blows out or if you have a, you know, sudden blowout, we notice it immediately, right? Because there's a loss in pressure, the, you know, the car uh, or the bike acts weirdly. There's a drag on one side. Um, so then you you notice it immediately, and you say, "Okay, something's wrong with the bike. You know, you're not able to balance. Something wrong with the car. It's dragging to one side, and you know it." But if it is a slow leak, right? If it is uh, going in, maybe you know, a few ounces at a time. I don't know if you can call it ounce, but you know, if if there's a slow leak, then the danger is that you don't notice it, right? And you don't notice uh, how far or you know how damaging the outcome is um, till it is too late right so maybe if there's a slow leak it's like okay you parked the vehicle you came home and it was fine when you parked the vehicle uh, you didn't notice it at all anything that you were driving but then the next morning you get up and uh, you want to go someplace in a hurry then you realize that the tire is completely flat right so that's a slow leak so you realize that oh, it has been going out uh, you know every few minutes or every hour but I didn't notice it right so so, so the writer of Hebrews is saying you know you give more earnest heed to the things that you've already heard okay because if if you don't if you're not careful if you're not holding on if you're not putting that to practice in your life then what would happen is that there is a chance of drifting away moving away and you don't even notice that movement right okay so um, so all that to say that, well, truth is powerful. Um, well, we, while we need to seek God and ask him for a fresh direction, fresh revelation, you know, uh, well, don't be afraid. Don't be insecure about presenting the truth, uh, what is already reiterated, what has already been uh, already shared. Okay. Um, then the thing is to avoid so this is more in terms of, uh, again, uh, rightly dividing the word and sharing it. Uh, avoid subjective revelations. Okay, so, uh, so what do we mean by that? Something that is subjective, something that is, uh, um, uh, you know, something that is uh, maybe uh, a revelation that is in a certain context it works. Uh, let's look at First uh, Timothy chapter 4. 
and verses one and two. Okay, so here's the warning that Paul gives Timothy. He says, "Now the Spirit expressly says that in, that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed." to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay. So um, so it, it's a warning. He's saying, you know, the source of certain teachings, uh, certain revelations, uh, doctrines, you need to be careful. Okay. So here he's saying, you know, they are giving heed or being attentive to deceiving spirits and these are doctrines of demons so which means these are not from god not from the holy spirit so we don't have the witness of the spirit in us because our conscience is already seared right uh, and we are speaking lies and hypocrisy which means we don't see it in our own lives we don't follow it in our own lives and and we are speaking those lies and hypocrisy and uh and our conscience is seared. So, uh, doctrines of demons and uh, uh, deceiving spirits. So, so these are causing. So, the thing is this: you know, we don't have to be paranoid about about it because as long as our heart's posture is, Lord, I want to share the truth. Uh, you show me if there's if I'm going off on a tangent anywhere. You show me. You lead me. I'm submissive. I'm submitted to your leading, to your equipping, to your you know. Uh, the discerning and everything, God, I'm submitted to you. So as long as we have that posture, then we are fine. Right. So here, this these doctrines or these teachings are from the deceiving spirits, and they are causing a person to depart from the faith itself. Okay. So that's the danger. Right. Similarly, if you look at um, you know the sixth chapter and verses three to five, so he says. Uh, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, uh, etc. Like useless wrangling of men wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain from such withdraw yourself okay. so here uh, again he's saying uh, be careful uh, when it comes to you know, what we consider as a special revelation you know always test always check always compare so he's saying that you know if, if someone does not consent to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus you know if you're negating that and he and maybe not even in agreement with the words of the lord uh and and look at this you know the doctrine which accords with godliness that is verse three right the latter part of verse 3, the doctrine which accords with godliness. That's very important. The teaching which is in agreement with godliness, which does not have a so-called facade of holiness or discipline or you know anything, um, but it's something which is in agreement, which accords with, is in harmony with godliness, which leads to godliness. Right? Um, so he's saying, you know, if it's otherwise, it will create all kinds of problems, envy, strife, suspicions, arguments, and everything. Right? Okay. So, so we avoid those things. Right? Watch what we teach. Okay. Uh, going to chapter four and verse sixteen again. Paul's instruction. He says, um, "Take heed to yourself. Be careful about your life, how you live your life, and to the doctrine." You know, in First Timothy and Second Timothy, Paul over and over again he's talking about, you know, these things um, to the young pastor. So he's saying, you know, be careful uh, how you, what you speak, because what you speak, what you teach, results in believing, and if it's uh, wrong believing, it will result in wrong action. You know, always he talks about that, right? Uh, because uh, you know, they could it was it could result in strife, it could result in division. Uh, but if it's something wholesome, um, then it reflects reflects in godliness, uh, results in godliness. Sorry. So here, uh, chapter six, 
um, you know, verse, um, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 4, verse 16, is take heed to yourself and to the doctrine and continue in them. Okay, continue in them. Like, uh, don't let it be just for a season, but you put it in your life, you walk in it, you believe, you walk in it. In doing this, you know, there is there is this whole thing of salvation that is happening, which is salvation of the soul. Uh, we are already saved, we are justified, but there is this whole thing of sanctification and salvation that is happening. It will save both yourself and those who hear you. Okay, so it's very important. Um, and uh, And one more instruction, some practical instruction is develop the ability to communicate God's word. Okay, so while um, you know we might be as people uh, following the Lord Jesus as ministers of God, um, you know we are passionate about uh, prayer and worship and receiving from Him. Uh, you know, um, also the thing is to develop the ability to communicate. You know, not all of us are maybe naturally gifted communicators, so it helps if we. If you struggle in that area, we find it challenging to communicate ideas to develop the ability. Okay, so this is uh, an ability that can be developed, which means that there is a certain amount of learning, certain amount of training, uh, certain practical things that we need to we need to do, we need to change, uh, maybe about our, ourselves, the you know the way we speak. Um, the the way we uh, the, the the way we express ideas, um, you know, and certain other things, you know, gestures and how we stand, and all these, you know, small, uh, minute things, which go a long way in enabling us to be good communicators. Right. So we can always learn. We can always learn from that, um, uh, and and better ourselves in this area. So saying, um, so. So this uh, it it helps right so when we develop the ability to communicate god's word clearly it always helps the hearer to learn to receive it to retain it uh, and also to put to practice okay so um so that's those are some things that we can look into okay okay so let's look at uh, you know some simple steps okay to confident speaking okay so when it comes to preaching of course we're talking about verbal communication right we're talking about communicating a message uh, by speaking out with words sentences um proclamation that happens so when it if we need to communicate um then we need a certain level of confidence in order to face people in order to uh, communicate the truth to them right um so um, so, what really helps us to be confident? Okay, now always uh, we just need to understand that there is this sense of uh, there could be a sense of apprehension, you know, uh, a small percentage of um, uh, nervousness even before we start, right? uh, which which is a physiological thing. Our body is getting ready. You know, there could be a small amount of you know, sweating that could happen, and you know, your, your body is getting physiologically ready for the task that's ahead. Right? So, which is which is fine. But if there's, um, you know, if there's so much of uncertainty, uncertainty and nervousness, and that results in lack of confidence, where you're forgetting what you need to share, where um, you're just constantly being crippled by fear. That you're not enjoying the whole thing, right? Um, then uh, we need to address it. We need to. It can be fixed. Right? It can be sorted, um, and uh, and we can have you know do uh, or share confidently or preach confidently. Okay, so let's look at a few things. So again, a practical few things, right? The first one is preparation. Okay. The for most part, why we are not confident? If you if you look back and maybe you had a, you know, presentation in school or college or you know wherever you had a, you had to talk in front of a you know uh, publicly speak in front of people, uh, the thing is that maybe there wasn't adequate preparation. Maybe you didn't have time. Maybe you just put on the spot, 
and you don't have time to prepare okay so preparation gives birth to confidence okay so that's the number one thing to to start to endeavor to prepare to know the content okay uh, what what is it that we are going to be speaking about to familiarize ourselves to um, to know the content and to um, uh, to research right to to be knowledgeable in whatever we are sharing okay so in the message that we are speaking that we are sharing you know how knowledgeable are we right you prepare you spend time you read through um and uh, like you know someone says uh, someone said that okay for every minute that you sp spend you need to spend an hour preparation but i mean it seems like a an exaggeration but the thing is you know but the takeaway is this that um when we prepare when we are more prepared um then we are confident you know so you are uh, acquainted with the topic we are you know confident in a in a right way you know uh, it's not like okay uh, i can do this i can do this on my own it's not that we are we are you know depending on the lord right for revelation for for continuous guidance for continuous you know uh, even as we speak we are we are depending we are saying god you know you 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 give me you know you're you're free to change things um you know you're free to you know drop in those ideas drop in those illustrations whatever it is god you know drop in those things that i need to emphasize you know lord you speak you speak to me um so we we are mindful of that right um but the fact is that when we prepare uh, uh the the bible talks about that the preparation of the heart is our responsibility we see that in proverbs right? the preparation of the heart belongs to man the answer of the tongue is from the lord so both are there both are true uh, you know we cannot negate the preparation of the heart we cannot negate the answer of the tongue that and that we receive from the lord so both are important right uh, so preparation so um i believe uh, like muhammad ali the the boxer you know his his uh, bouts or the matches lasted uh, you know 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes but the thing is he would spend hours in preparing for that match right to be physically mentally prepared for that um so preparation creates confidence in our abilities confidence in knowledge confidence in a successful outcome um confidence to overcome the fear and the confidence to take action right so preparation the second thing is when uh, you know after preparation uh, practice okay now um to be engaged in in public speaking to be engaged uh, or to be preaching uh, one needs to practice okay if we are not used to um preaching then we need to actually you know practice it because there are a lot of things that are that could be new okay for the i remember the first time i uh, this was in school and um the uh, the teacher asked me to you know uh, come come in front and and i think it was some some essay that i had to speak uh, that i had to a whole cl class had actually prepared but we had to come and speak it out in front of the whole class so so when my turn came i went forward i went in front and when i saw the class i froze because everything was new in the sense that view itself you know uh, we were so used to sitting in the in our desk and um, and then you know looking at the teacher and we just just one person um was facing us and we were facing you know the teacher but then suddenly you're facing the class and there's a whole bunch of people who are looking at you, you know, it was not just one person so the view itself is different the view has changed and what we realize is that uh, okay we're so used to sitting and hearing the teacher speak listening to the teacher's voice but now it was no longer the DJ, it was my voice that I was, you know, uh, that I was hearing. And it sounded so different, so strange. Just to hear my, my voice over and over again 
for you know for that uh, for that it was it was not a very long uh, session it was just a few minutes but then it's felt very very strange very awkward because we're not used to it right? so so um so to, to be able to practice that and right? to be able to uh, stand in front of a crowd big small whatever and to be able to speak to be able to you know and also we we settle you know certain things in our own mind knowing, knowing that okay this is how it will be you know this is the what the view will be and this is how my voice will sound okay so we settle all that uh, in our minds um and also with practice comes uh, we become more and more proficient right with practice suddenly you realize hey, i i'm saying a lot of things that i should not be you know i'm you, uh, uh, for example uh, some repetitions maybe and uh, maybe some annoying things like uh, i'm repeating certain words like uh, you know i know and you know things like that so um so you realize when you actually start speaking and right? you realize that uh, you're speaking very fast you realize that you're speaking very slow all those things all those things which uh, um, which would not which which we would not have understood or which we would not have it would come to our knowledge unless we practiced right so with practice all these things come up and you understand okay uh, i need to maybe change things here i need to change things there right i need to be a little more crisp over here i cannot just go on and on i need to state the point and move on to the next thing and things like that so we we learn all that okay so um, there are several ways by which we can practice speaking okay for those of us who are absolutely new to this uh, to take on opportunities right maybe there are certain opportunities to to minister in a smaller setting and and so on you can do that you know maybe a life group um, maybe a, maybe even a speaking club uh, and so on you know there's something called toastmasters right there's a public speaking uh you know uh, platform uh, which is really uh, i know some people who have done that and they've gotten really good at public speaking right um so so, so th those are some things that we can yeah you know, now you know while we look at these practical things right uh, we are these are skills that we are developing okay um and you using these skills for god's glory you know we need to look at it that way okay these are these skills are not going to replace the power of god's transformative you know the transformative power of god's holy spirit these skills are not going to in any way replace um the the convicting power of the holy spirit uh, these skills are not going to replace any of that right uh, the power of god the presence of god you know uh, those are some key things fundamental foundational things right and we are always dependent and inviting god to do his thing right? but these are skills that can facilitate the message to be communicated in a clear manner we are after all you know his spokesperson right we have he has called us to be ambassadors representatives so these these are things that we can do to upgrade our skills to get better at uh, you know at communicating right so that's why we are looking at this right okay then uh, practice and then perseverance okay perseverance being that okay um just because things didn't go well the first time or the second time not to give up Okay, so we are keep on you know, putting in the effort, putting in the preparation, putting in the practice, so we don't uh, we don't give up. Okay, um, I remember the first time actually this was not in public speaking, but it was uh, the first time. Of course, I shared uh, you know this is how it happened. It looked very different and whole scenario. So I froze. I I just mumbled through some things and I could not uh, think. So uh, went back. you know sweating and uh, and uh, quite determined that I'll never do that again and the same thing happened when it came to singing also you know uh, though it's a different out of context but i'm saying you know it was a public thing uh, so i i went and i went prepared with one song and i you know sang and uh, the guitar unfortunately the guitar that i played at home was tuned differently uh, to a different octave the guitar where i played in school that was tuned very high and so i ended up singing very high 
uh, and it sounded you know not like my voice um, so the guys were saying you know you sounded like a girl why did you why did you sing like that and so it was very embarrassing by the time i finished the song and um, and then I, i i decided you know i'm never going to do that again never again will i do it never again will i go in public and make a fool of myself you know so so the thing is this you know we can come to some conclusions like that and really miss out on what god has for us as ministers right so just because we've you know did a poor job or did a bad job uh you know once twice thrice right don't give up you know don't don't be too hard on yourself right um you know work at preparing work at uh, uh you know and all these skills all these practical skills so that um, so so the word is perseverance the key is perseverance not to give up to constantly you know learn improve and uh, go back to it again and you will see that okay there is a there is a marked improvement and those improvements can be celebrated need to celebrate uh, we can introspect reflect and see where is it that we can make changes make changes and it's a journey right that we make okay so um so the, the thing is this you know to to talk to review to introspect uh, to and to train you know to re- reflect uh, and to introspect and then you know to uh, uh, to do that again to take action to review to improve um, and do that again right uh, okay so um, so three things that we saw you know the three p's you know preparation practice and perseverance um very important now uh, the thing the, the other thing is um is to plan a simple structure okay now you know in our message outline we looked at uh, you know several things we looked at the introduction we looked at you know the components the mechanics of sermon preparation we looked at different things you know we looked at a opening statement and those are all you know we, we went into the nuts and bolts of it so we kind of had to spread that out and and look at each of these things right but when it comes to the structure of delivering the sermon you know have a very simple structure okay so it, you know it can be like this introduction you know tell them what you are going to tell them okay the body of the message tell them two or three clear ideas okay that's the body of the message right and in conclusion tell them what you have told them you know that's a very simple way of looking at it conclusion is tell them what you have told them okay while all the other things that we discussed these are true but then to keep in mind that this is a structure right this is a simple thing you know in all the complex ideas and everything that we are going to you know look at and communicate you know especially you know we've been looking at some uh this last sermon series that we have been looking we looked at faith you know faith and science uh last five sundays if you go and you know and review those you know there's quite a bit of heavy content there but if you look at the structure uh, you know the flow of it it's this you know today we're going to look at this and then you tell what you're going to look at what you what you're actually looking at and then you conclude by saying okay this is what we study this is what we uh you know uh learned today right so have a simple structure to the message okay um the thing is to uh, also understand that there is a, when it comes to public speaking you know it can be a very exhilarating uh you know experience uh, it can give, give us much pleasure right knowing that you are a spokesperson for god knowing that you're ministering the living word that you're carrying the you know the the living word of god um knowing that um you know the outcome of it is going to result in people being set free right uh, and um, change lives and transformation so it's a it's an actually a very thrilling very exciting um uh, you know process it's process right and uh, and we need to kind of um um we need to enjoy it right um because initially though we might be you know nervous and we may not really enjoy it but then with perseverance and with uh you know with with uh, 
some of those things that are being addressed, you know, maybe our our speaking style, our expression, our gestures, our physical posture, everything, you know. Um, so you keep improving that, and it can be a very pleasurable experience, like right? because you're sharing something which is um, the truth, which is eternal, right, and uh, something that brings life in people. So always be mindful of that, right? and uh, and it can be very liberating for the hearer. And and the thing is this for us also, you know, it's a reiteration as a and as more and more as we declare the truth, uh, you know, we are being ex established in it ourselves, right? Okay. Um, then, uh, in terms of personality, okay, uh, you know, it's a uh, while we. Um, you know, while we share this message, while we share this eternal truth, um, the fact is that uh, we ourselves are actually part of the message. Right? The messenger himself or herself also is a message. You know, uh, okay, you may say, why? Why do you say that? The thing is this: that uh, you know, if you are a doer of the word, if you you know, if you have put to word, put to practice the word, if you believe in it, if you are convicted of it, convinced of it, then the message comes out, uh, is communicated in a different way. Okay. Whereas if you're distanced from the content, if you are not convinced about it, if, uh, if you are definitely not living it, right? So then, the message comes out in a very different way altogether. The message becomes a more of a sharing of information. Uh, this is what they say. You know, it's not something that is authentic. It's not part of your life. Right? It's not. You're not. It's not intrinsically. You know, entwined part of my life. So it comes out very differently. Right? It is. It, it's proclaimed very differently. Okay. So the, so the thing is that our personality, you know, we could be, uh, I don't know, serious people, we could be funny, we could be, you know, thinkers, we could be, you know, whatever. Our personality comes through uh, in the message that we share, okay, uh, in the content that we share, right? Our personality comes through. So, um, so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of that. It doesn't have to be a very neutral, monotone, right? Now, uh, you know, God didn't uh, design us that way. He, the way He designed us to be unique, is that our personality, whoever you know, however He has designed us, um, the uniqueness that we have, the creativity that we have, and uh, you know, the so uh, you know, uh, uh, who we are as a person comes through in the message, right? and needs to come through in the message for people to relate. Okay, so we're not saying that. Okay, uh, you, you know, you elevate yourself no okay so uh, we're not saying that we're not saying that okay you need to your your you know you, you need your personality everything should be first or it needs to be elevated no you know in the communication of the truth in all humility you know uh, just feel free for you know who you are as a person to come through in the message right and that will come through because you know you are you have dealt with the word i mean de dealt with the word in the sense uh, you know you, you your response to the word uh, the truth that you're declaring your uh, engagement with it your involvement with it you know uh, how far you esteem it right and how far you have put to practice in your own life you know all that will come through because you know in your in our in our sharing okay how much we are convinced of it, how much we are not, everything comes through. So our personality comes through in what we are sharing, you know, because, and, uh, and it's, and, and it's, you know, you look at an example, maybe you're excited about, you know, sharing something and you find something, you know, really funny and you share that, or you talk about your life experience and uh, when it comes to this truth and how, what it means to you. So all that comes out, as we are sharing so our personality our who we are as a person you know comes through in the message that we share and we have to hold back we don't have to be very restrictive about it we just need to make sure that um 
you know we're not putting ourselves on display or you know it's it's not like a egoistic thing okay this is what i did i did and i you know it's not that but in the communication of the truth who you are as a person comes through definitely will come through and that makes the message even more relatable uh it's even more authentic because as people you know we have strengths we have flaws we are we have things that we are working through right um we have uh, you know certain certain things that we have failed in and uh, we need the grace of god to help us uh, you know stand up and carry on so so all that comes through and uh, and that is what makes the message even more you know relatable and and god uses that you know god uses who we are um god uses our strength god uses our flaws everything like because his his strength um is made perfect in our limitations in our weaknesses right so yeah so that's the thing so we so the thing is this that we we need not imitate uh, uh, someone else okay so that also you know i'm saying with um, uh you know carefully in the sense you know if someone is uh, you know if someone has a uh like uh, you know there are best practices that we can always learn from right learn from people learn from you know that that is how you know as part of our skill and ability you know best practices we learn this is what they say and do but we don't have to you know uh, at the cost of changing our own personality we don't have to do it at that right so there's a fine line right um, in in wanting to be like someone or you know the way you lose your authentic voice your authentic uh, self and you're pretending to be someone else you know so that is what uh, you know we don't have to do that you don't need to do that okay in wanting to sounding like someone in wanting to you know come across like someone someone else rather than yourself right so be authentic be real and uh, and and you know so so the thing is if you you trying to be some like someone else um you know there's always this thing that um, sometimes we might forget right forget to be like that person all the time right so uh, and the, we let down our guard and then we let our true self out right so uh whether it's the manner of speaking whether it's the way you conduct yourself whether it's you know whatever else right so so the thing is to to be ourselves always and therefore there is true freedom in that right um well we can always improve we can always change we can always add be skillful all that is true right? but be your self right authentic self okay i guess we'll stop here there are a few more uh, things that we need to look at um so we'll stop here and then we'll continue in our next class right okay thank you so much god bless we'll meet in our next class bye thank you pastor bye bye